Hi, this is lesson four for kindergarten through sixth grade for Sunday, April 21st, 2013. The title of the lesson is David Shows Kindness to Saul. This is a pretty amazing lesson with a lot of chances for good storytelling on the part of the teacher. Really, really exciting parts uh, parts to tell here about Saul's pursuit of David. Uh, stuff that would be worthy of an action movie, uh, except this is this is true. This is historical. This is... God's guiding hand protecting his anointed one from some pretty tense and dangerous situations. And key points, uh, we forgive as God forgives. There, Saul did, definitely did not deserve the forgiveness that David showed him throughout this lesson, but he did. Not because he was a really good guy, but because he knew how much God had forgiven him. And the second point to put in my, keep in mind is we put our lives in God's hands, knowing he will work all things for our good took a lot of trust on David's part while he was fleeing from Saul. Uh, just to, to know, God will watch over me. God has made me promises that one day I will sit on the throne as Israel's king. I know that God will keep that promise. Some of the storytelling items. As the story begins, you see how far Saul has fallen. Once he was Israel's king, uh, God was working with Saul as king, and he rejected God. And he sinks so low here that an evil spirit enters his body while David is playing the harp for him. And Saul grabs a spear and tries to, to kill David by pinning him to the wall. But David is able to escape. Now David goes home and gets some of his stuff together. And his wife, Michael, who is actually interesting, it's, it's Saul's daughter. Um, so David is actually Saul's son-in-law. And David's wife, Michael, helps cover for David. And kind of puts uh, a bunch of stuff in in the bed that makes it look like David's there. So when the soldiers come, she says, oh, David's sick in bed. The soldiers go up and look, and David escapes out the back. So another exciting part there. And just the neat part of the story, too, Michael hadn't always been the greatest wife to David. So it's nice to see now that in the moment of his greatest need, she's there helping, helping and protecting him. David runs and hides with the prophet Samuel. Uh, Samuel, a story that the, or a person in biblical history that the kids probably know very well, uh, God's prophet. So David runs and hides with him. And Saul finds out that David is hiding there, and he sends three groups of soldiers to go and, and capture David and bring him back. And each time they go, the Holy Spirit overpowers these soldiers until finally Saul goes himself and says, enough is enough, I will go get David. And the Holy Spirit overpowers him too and prevents him from doing anything at all to David. So again, you know, blatantly, you see the hand of God in action. Uh, David gathers a force of soldiers who were loyal to him, and David had been part of the army. He, people looked up to him and respected him, so he gathered a group of, of guys who were still willing to fight with him. And they're kind of hiding out in the woods, away from Saul and the, the majority of the army. And while they're there, they receive word that the Philistines are about to attack an Israelite city, a pretty helpless Israelite city. And so David's torn because he wants to go and help them you know, and do his duty to his, his fellow Israelite brothers. But he knows that if he goes out and protects them, it's going to attract Saul's attention and Saul's going to come his way. So David does a great thing. He prays to the Lord. He inquires of the Lord what he should do. And, and God tells him, you should go. You should go help them. So David rescues the city. And instead of being grateful for what he'd done, uh, the people of this city turn around and they tell Saul, well, David was here. You know, they kind of tell on him, rat him out. And so David, you know, by the grace of God, still manages to escape in the desert. And that brings us to some probably more well-known parts of the story. Uh, now Saul is pursuing David across the, the desert and the mountains of Israel. At one point, Saul goes alone into a cave where David and his men are hiding. And uh, David has the opportunity to stop this, you know, to stop the pursuit. You know, here's this guy that has been chasing him across the countryside, trying to kill him so desperately. And David, you know, with one swift movement, could take him out. Uh, instead, David just cuts off a tiny piece, a little triangle of Saul's robe uh, while he's he's sitting there. And you know, David is so strong in his faith that later on he even, even feels guilt about doing that. You know, how could I disrespect God's authority by cutting off a piece of his robe? Uh, the rest of David's men were very upset with him for not killing Saul and, and you know, not just taking the opportunity to end this, you know, this chase. But David said, I can't. That, that's not my responsibility. This is God's authority still. 
So Saul finds out about this, that David had the chance to kill him. And he's so moved. He's moved to the point of tears. And he goes to David and says, I'm sorry. It's over. I won't pursue you anymore. Um, forgive me for what I've done. It didn't last very long. It's it's not very long like, later that Saul starts pursuing David again for the same reasons. He can't stand David. He can't stand that he's going to be king. Uh, so he's he's looking to kill him again. And this time he takes 3,000 of his best soldiers along. And they're they're camping. And David and one of his companions uh, sneak into the camp in the middle of the night. And so you think of all the soldiers are, you know, kind of circling the the leaders and especially Saul. Uh, so Saul was kind of in the heart of the camp. So David and his right-hand man sneak all the way into the middle of this camp. And Saul's got his spear, you know, lying next to him. And David takes his spear away. And uh, again, this this guy, his right hand man, is telling him, "Look, you gotta kill him. You know, you spared his life last time, and he just did the same thing. He started to try to kill you again." But David says, "Again, no, I, that's not my right. I, I don't have a right to kill this authority." So he just takes his spear, and they go back out to out to camp, away from the camp, and they get their army's attention from far enough away that they can't come after him. And David holds up the spear and says, "You know, look, Saul, I had a chance to kill you again, and I didn't. Can we please stop this?" And Saul has kind of the same reaction. He's deeply shamed at what he had done, um, that he's been trying to kill David, and David shows him nothing but love and kindness. We have Saul's last words to David recorded here. May you be blessed, my son David. You will do great things and surely triumph. So I have a nice farewell. Uh, but the story of Saul doesn't end well. That's a, a story for another lesson. Some of the teaching items to consider. Uh, the reason that Saul got to this point where he was chasing David to kill him was it was all jealousy and hatred um so you see these these sins of jealousy sins of hatred lead into other sins finally wanting to kill him so the warning for us to be careful about angry feelings we have for others because those can so easily and so quickly uh transform into other thoughts that can lead us even to taking someone's life as Saul did David's respect for God's chosen authority is just the highest respect, even to the point that this guy is going to try to kill me, but I'm not going to you know, take the chance to, to end his life because this is someone that God has put over me. So uh, the lesson for us is that we respect all those God has placed over us, parents, teachers, government officials. They're there because God has put them there. Even if we don't always agree with them, we respect them, we honor them, and we obey them unless they tell us to do something that is opposed to God's word. So we learn from David's respect. And finally, we learn from David's forgiveness for Saul. And like we said at the very beginning, we forgive because God has forgiven us. If we try to do that without God, if we try to forgive without God, we will fail. I mean, the only truly loving Christian forgiveness and Christian love that that can only come from God that's only a fruit of faith and if we remember the love and mercy that God has shown us if we go to his word again and again and remember the height the depth the great width of God's love that is what is going to motivate us to treat each other with love and forgiveness okay God bless your work thank you